the problem that we now have is that we're just bombarded with all this information on Twitter, Instagram. Internet is now full of articles like 130 amazing online resources, long lists of different tools, 121 tools for distance learning, resources for online instructions, and so on. And so it's gotten to the point where there has been an outcry from teachers, parents, and students about this flood of information about this multitude of applications that we suddenly need to learn. And uh, I don't think this is the right way to approach distance learning under current circumstances. And the truth is you don't have to know all these applications to be able to deliver an effective class remotely. You only need a couple of things, really. I believe that if we approach distance learning strategically, it will be an enjoyable experience for everybody, for teachers and parents and students. There are a couple of things we need to realize about distance learning. The first thing is not all applications are created equal. Some applications are great. In fact, some of, some of the applications that are available to us today are really great, but they have a steep learning curve. And if you have not used them before, now it's not probably the best time to learn them because what you really need right now is just fundamentals, just some basic things to keep on the continuity of learning, just to keep the instructions going. Some of these tools that are available, they will only slow you down and add to the frustration, to your own frustration, to the frustration of the students and parents. So I'm not suggesting that you don't learn them. I'm just suggesting that sometimes it's probably not the best time to step up your game in, in online learning. You just need to get your head around the fundamentals first. The second thing is we can roughly break uh, the, all this multitude of applications into five categories. And once you break them down, you will realize that you only need one or sometimes two applications in each category to be able to teach effectively online. You don't need all this hundred or 500 applications, you just need about, well, seven or eight, really, maybe even fewer than that, to be able to teach online. And this is what we're gonna talk about today, how to select these core applications, learn them, forget about the rest, and just stay happy and keep your students and parents of the students happy as well. So the first category that we're gonna look at is learning management systems, or also known as LMS. What LMS systems are, they're basically a substitute for your physical classroom. Because you can no longer access your students in the classroom, you need a way to assign work for your students. You also need to be able to collect the work from the students. And so this is what the LMS systems are designed for, for you to be able to assign some work, for students to complete this work under certain deadlines, and then for you to collect this work, grade it, and return it. And this is what the LMS systems are. Now, there are maybe dozens of LMS systems out there. Just to name the few, there is Edunation, Udmodo, uh, there's Century Learning, Canvas, there's Blackboard, Google Classroom. All of these, in essence, accomplish the same goal. They enable you to manage the learning process. Do we need to learn all of them? Absolutely not. Now, you just need to select one learning management system, learn it, master it, and just ignore the rest. Just forget about the rest. If your school did not have a learning management system, then I would strongly encourage you to consider Google Classroom. It's pretty straightforward, user-friendly for both teacher and student, and it's free as well. Link to Google Classroom video tutorial will be in the description. Google Classroom is perfect for upper elementary all the way to university. If you are teaching younger kids, then probably Seesaw would be your weapon of choice, but again, the Google Classroom will most probably meet your needs for the LMS. So this is one app out of 20, or maybe more than that. Now the next category that we're gonna look at is presentation software. We need to think about what is the software that we're going to use as educators to deliver content, much like what you do in your normal classroom. And now when we don't have physical access to our students, we need to think, okay, so what is that, that I'm gonna use to create a presentation? There are dozens, if not hundreds, platforms and applications out there that will position themselves as one-stop shop for your presentation needs. Just to name the few, there is Adpuzzle, Explain Everything, Xplea, there's Nearpod, Peer Deck, Prezi, 
Squiggle, there are just hundreds of them. What you need right now, the simplest tool you can have to deliver your presentation. And I think the good old PowerPoint, or if you don't have access to PowerPoint, Google Slides, Keynote, if you use a Mac computer, will fit the purpose really well. If you use these platforms before, just, just carry on. That's all you need to deliver uh, an effective lesson. Now, if you wanna step up again a little bit and learn a new platform, I would encourage you to go for Prezi. Prezi is more fluid, more interactive, looks more sleek. It involves some learning curve, like I said before, and most often than not, if you haven't worked with Prezi before, you can spend hours preparing a good looking presentation, and at the end of the day, your students will not tell the difference. So, again, it's a question of time and effort, and uh, I guess in the time uh, that we are living right now, it's more important to stay mentally healthy, to stay rested. I would suggest just go for the tools that you've used before. Uh, if you have energy and desire, to learn something new, I would say Prezi or Adpuzzle or Buncee, any of these applications really will step up your game in terms of presentation software. But if you just want to stick to the basics, then PowerPoint, Google Slides or Keynote is your best choice. Now, once we know the presentation software, the next category that we're gonna have a look at is screen recording and whiteboards. You need to think about it this way. Now, when you have a presentation software, you need to have a way of delivering a presentation to your students. Once you have the PowerPoint ready, or once you have the Prezi ready, you need to have a way to deliver your lesson to your students. In other words, you need to record your screen or yourself or do a voiceover, you name it. Sort of what I'm doing right now, I'm recording my screen to do this tutorial. In your case, you will record the screen of the content related to your lesson and then send it to your students. Again, like in any other category, there are hundreds, maybe not hundreds, maybe dozens of applications available uh, like Loom, Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify. Now, all these applications basically do one thing. They record your screen. Sometimes they enable you to annotate, sometimes they record your webcam, but they're all the same. You're all the same. You just need to pick one and stick to it. In my experience, I found Screen Recorder Pro easy to use, it's free. I have a tutorial on how to use this software posted on my YouTube channel. Pick one screen recorder, stick to it, learn it, forget the rest. Now, there's one more thing you might want to take into consideration. I put it under the screen recording as the digital whiteboard. And now, what digital whiteboard enables you to do if you're explaining math, for instance, you might want to uh, explain to your students some equations or uh, make some annotations. So what uh, whiteboard, basically a digital uh, whiteboard or blackboard, which you can use while you're recording your screen, you can make annotations. Again, there are many platforms out there. This is the least of the platforms I personally found. Zideboard, this is the, the applications I'm using right now. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use. It has this really nice canvas, a lot of tools to, for, for you to use to create digital whiteboard. Uh, you can then export this whiteboard, can save this whiteboard. There's an option to upgrade. Um, I didn't upgrade and I've been able to do everything that I wanted to. So again, number of applications here. Just pick one, stick with it, forget about the rest. The third category uh, that we're gonna look at is live interaction. It depends on the requirements of the distance learning of your school, whether or not you are required to interact with the students online or you, just, you, can, you can simply assign work to them. Even if you're not required to interact li uh, uh, live with your students, I, I believe it's helpful to maintain relationship with the students, just to put your face out there, just to say hi, you know, just for the sense of community building, for the sense of uh, relationship. I think it's healthy to have live uh, communication with the students. Again, hundreds of applications out there, you just need one. In my experience, uh, Zoom has done a really good job of offering me an opportunity and a chance to uh, host a meeting. Students can uh, join the meeting. There are many things in Zoom that you can do when it comes to classroom management. Just a nice tool. Link to the Zoom video tutorial will be in the description. Uh, again, if you want to step up your game a little bit, Flipgrid is another cool tool to use to interact with the students. It's not entirely live. Uh, Flipgrid basically is an exchange of videos, but it feels live because you see the person talking. Cool tool, especially for teenagers, for younger kids, if you're teaching language to get this oral communication going. 
There are other applications like Mentimeter and uh, Dink Talk. These are the hyperlinks. Actually, all of the applications are hyperlinked. Go ahead and explore them. But if you want just the basics, then stick to the Zoom and then maybe Flipgrid. The last category is practice or ass assessment. You deliver a presentation through the presentation software, you record your presentation, share it with the students, and uh, maybe have a live interaction, and then you want your students to practice. There, again, there are dozens of applications on the internet now. Uh, there's Albert, there's Enuma, there's iXL, Kahoot, Khan Academy, OneCourse, Quizzes, and, and many, many others. I strongly advise you to pick two or three maximum. They all pretty much the same. There's, there's, there's very slight difference between all these platforms. Just don't overwhelm yourself, don't overwhelm your students and parents. Pick three. My recommendation is Kahoot, Khan Academy, and Quizzes. Concentrate on these three apps, learn them, master them, and forget about the rest. As usual, if you want to step up your game as an online educator, these are the other platforms that you might want to have a look at. Now when we've categorized all these platforms and realized that we only need a couple of applications to run a successful online class, you actually only need one learning management system, one presentation software, one screen recording software, one whiteboard, one application for live interaction, and three applications for assessment and practice. What we've done right now, we've narrowed the list of 58 applications down to just eight. Now, I believe that looks much more manageable and less more stressful and frustrating, knowing that I don't need to know 200 applications to deliver online class, I just need to know eight. And maybe fewer than that. If you know how to use PowerPoint, that's off the list. If you've used Kahoot before, that's off the list. Just need to know a couple of new tricks, maybe five or six applications. Forget about the rest, forget about those long lists and just concentrate and have fun with distance learning. Believe me, you will have more fun, your students will have more fun and the students' parents will be more relieved as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for taking your time. I hope that you will feel less frustrated now and you will have um, more clear vision and maybe some strategy as to how to approach distance learning and how to get the fundamentals for uh, online learning. Don't stress yourself, just concentrate on fundamentals, learn them, forget about the rest and have fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.